In this lesson, we are going to walk through the actual creating of the content for SEO, how to produce content that makes readers happy and makes Google happy. So let's start off with some, <laughs> some beginner mistakes. In my opinion, the Yoast green lights, you know what I'm talking about. If you use Rose Yoast or rank math, I try to combine those words there to try and optimize your blog post, i.e. on-page SEO, on-page SEO are the things you can actually do to try and influence your SEO optimization for any given piece of content, the words you write on the page, on-page SEO. These tools will try and give you scores or the green lights are famous in Yoast. Do not, do not, do not worry about those at all. Anybody who does is not doing it right, in my opinion. It's an easy way out, and it leads to poor content. It just does. Stuffing keywords is a thing of the past as well. Trying to make sure that, like, fountain pen ink keyword is in your post, like, a hundred times. Not necessary. Should it be in your post at all? Yeah, probably. Maybe once or twice. It doesn't matter that much. If you're actually, you did your research and your homework, and your outline contains what it needs to to answer user intent, this is going to work itself out naturally. It will. I can promise you that. Stuffing your keyword in the first sentence, first paragraph. A lot of people kind of do that. I, I do think you should be pretty specific with answering user intent, and that's probably going to require the keyword or something close, right? It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, which we'll talk about in a second. But really trying to like nail it in there, word for word, letter by letter. It's not necessary. It really isn't. Stop obsessing over related keywords. This is less common in 2023, but people used to obsess over LSI keywords. If you don't even know what that means, don't even worry about it. Like related keywords, you have to include these in the post. Again, if you did your research in your outline, you're going to get a better piece of content without worrying for keywords. That's more, it's going to be better and it's going to rank higher. And the reason I know this, because this is what I do <laughs> and all my competitors don't and I outrank them and it's magic. It's not actually magic. I'm not actually any better than they are. I just like. This is how you should do SEO. You write the best piece of content out there. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm ranting already. What about tools like Surfer, Pete? Surfer SEO. There's one I've actually uh, bought recently called Neuron Writer, which kind of does the same thing. These use NLP, Natural Language Processing, to try and tell you you need the, these keywords in your content or these topics in your content. Now, I said keywords and topics there. Well, that actually spoils what I think. I think... Uh, if you use these to try and tell you the keywords, I need to like put these keywords in my post. I think that's unhelpful and it makes your content worse. But I do like these tools, especially for getting ideas and filling out your outline, the general topics that need to be in any given post. I've actually found Neuron Writer just as good as Surfer, by the way, and it's far cheaper. Absolutely fine. For just getting ideas like, oh, you know what? I see this keyword over here should be included. I'm not going to bother trying to stuff that keyword in there, but this is, this could actually be like a nice little paragraph or two that needs to be in my content. Maybe I'll add it in. So that's, that's my spiel on surfer SEO and uh, some of these other ones, these NLP natural language processing, forget about trying to get the perfect surfer SEO score. It's not going to make your content any better. It's not, it's just not. I feel very confident about this, but those tools can be helpful for ideas. Anyways, uh, this keyword stuff and using Jasper.ai, any of these AI writing assistants, readers can see through this. And if not now, readers are definitely going to be seeing through this in a year or two because there's like a billion AI tools on the market. I have a bonus lesson in the, uh, the, the paid $3 version of this course. You go buy that and you can watch my uh, AI video. I actually use some AI tools, but man, I don't really use it just for content. <laughs> People see through that. It's going to be bad content and everybody's going to be doing it because it's so easy. Above all else, great content is informative, but personal and real, personal and real. Most of the SEOs that I know and trust and follow in the past six months, since the AI writing tool explosion, have really been leaning into this idea of personal and real. We want to see your authority. Make that clear in your content. That's your, that's your content strategy. Okay. What is user intent? 
we've already talked about this a lot, but it's what Google has determined people are looking for. It's not necessarily correct always, but it's what Google has determined people are looking for when they search for any given keyword. How to clean a fountain pen. They're looking for information. Show me how to clean my fountain pen. Best pen blogs. They're looking for a list of other fountain pen websites. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Twisby Diamond uh, 580 review. They're looking for a review, some summary, some pros and cons for that particular pen. It's my favorite fountain pen. Fountain pens for beginners. They're looking for a mix of kind of both, probably, right? They're probably looking for a little bit of info and a few recommendations. The best fountain pen for beginners would be even more clear. They're looking for a list of recommendations. All of these come back to user intent. And to spoil some of my content here, content that ranks, that performs well in Google, nails this. Satisfying user intent. Conquering user intent. Now, we'll come back to that in just a second. Do use your keywords here, by the way. And your blog post title, like Best Fountain Pen Ink. But even then, don't worry about exact words. Pen versus pens, plural, does not make a difference, really. Make it natural. Make it something a human would want to read. That's more important. And your permalink, the URLs, dot com slash keyword, keyword, keyword. I usually just do the exact match, even for long tail here. It's not really that important. I think it doesn't. The shorter, the better, really. So it's more readable. But I, I think it's a good idea to have some of your keywords in that URL. And again, you see our fountain pen's good for drawing. Mine is just like, that's literally the entire phrase, the entire keyword. Just did it like that. And that's good. Example. Children's books. Children's books. Children's book. Kids books. Books for kids. These are the same thing. And if you write a good post for children's books... You're going to rank for these other keywords. What are the best kids' books? What are the best books for kids? What are the best children's books? Those are all the same post. It's different keywords. It's the same post. It's the same user intent, if that makes sense. So it doesn't matter that much. Don't worry about, oh, it's an S versus not an S. It's plural. It's not plural. It doesn't matter. Google understands what you're doing. It really does. All right. So what you're getting for here is the search intent behind the keywords. Remember this. As I go through the nitty-gritty here, which I'm about to do, how can I conquer user intent quickly, clearly, before they leave the page, before they go look at one of my competitors? I want them on my blog post getting all the answers, getting what they need. How can I conquer user intent quickly, clearly, and <laughs> I made up a word here, engagingly? How can I engage them with visuals, with audio, with um, video, with graphs, with charts, with graphics, with uh, good photos? Like what, what is it I can do? Formatting in my blog post. What is it I can do to engage people to quickly and clearly understanding user intent? That's your goal in all of this. Remember this. Everything we do, I'm about to come back to this. All right. So nitty gritty. Intros. Let's just, let's just start here. A lot of people will tell you to write intros last and blog posts. I don't, I don't know. I just, I've been doing this for a while and that's what I do, but no joke. Um, this is like the one and only piece of content that I'll give you like a formula for <laughs> the rest of it. There's no formula. You're on your own. Just fill out the outline really. But intros, uh, well, they're important. They're important. You got to keep people on the page. You want to make users happy. The lead is the most important part, but the first sentence, I usually start with something that kind of confirms to the reader you are in the right place. Very short. One sentence, two sentences, max. This one is even like a little bit lengthier than I usually do, this example right here. It's usually just like one sentence, even shorter than this. It's a bad example, but just one sentence. I usually ask a question. Something to do with fountain pens on planes. Do you frequently travel and you love fountain pens? Question mark. That's it, right? Something that lets them know, oh yes, I do, and that's why I search this in Google. I'm in the right place. That's what you're going for here. Now, the lead. Let's actually come down here because I talk about this more. I either reverse conclusion. A lot of people are trending in 2023 to not write conclusions in your blog posts. I could go either way on this, but I do think putting the conclusion up front, the reverse conclusion, is important. It's called the lead. This is a journalism term. It just basically means the point, the answer. The summary. Let's go up to our examples here. How to clean a fountain pen. In the first part of the post, I'm actually going to answer that. And I usually bold it. 
or even like highlight it. I, I do some CSS to highlight it to make it really clear. Here is the answer to your question. Or if it's a review, like my Diamond uh, 580 review, I will put down my, here's my overall opinion. One paragraph, it's bolded, it's clear, it's up front at the top of the post, and it gives my opinion on the review. It's my overall review. It's the answer to the question that people are searching for. It's a few bullet points. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. It could be whatever formatting it needs to be, but it needs to be the answer, the summary, the reverse conclusion up front at the very top. And you can even see, I did repeat my keywords right here. So are fountain pens allowed on planes? Answer. It's bolded. That's the lead. I do this for every blog post I write ever, period, end of story. Part of the reason is because I just want to make people happy and that's what I want. I love websites that do this because I get to search for something in Google, click on their website and get an answer immediately and clearly. Sorry, I'm ranting, but you should do this. Oh, and also you'll try to win Google featured snippets. That's another big point. Um, anything else in the lead? It's a journalism term. You can look at that right there. It's a vital part of, vital part of a blog post, in my opinion, that lead, L-E-D-E. -E. You can go read more, but really you do that. So after this, in your intros, again, still pretty important. Why should we trust you? An authority building sentence. And on this, you know, I think I've actually updated this blog post since there. I literally went on a flight and took a fountain pen with me just so I could get a picture and put right here in this intro. And the reason I did that is because I want people to know you can trust me. Why am I an authority on this subject? Well, look at me. I have my fountain pen and it's on the airplane. I took a picture of it. Here it is. And I'm pointing to it, I think, in the picture. It's just a sentence or an image in that case, but really just a sentence that shows why we can trust you. If you're writing about dog breeds and Yorkies and stuff like that, show a picture of you sitting next to your Yorkie and say, I've been a Yorkie owner for years. That is all you need to say. I've been doing this. I'm a teacher and I have experience with this. I'm a chemist. And so I can talk about this chemistry thing or whatever it is. Showcase your authority in one or two sentences. That's important. And then a preview of what's to come. Uh, now this could be different. I sometimes just literally do keep reading and I'll share everything I need to everything you need to know about fountain planes on pens. That one's kind of lame, but it works. Other times I'll literally just put a table of contents there. If I don't want to talk a whole lot more and I want to get people to the first subheader, or if I really, if it's like a really easy lead, like somebody typed a question into Google, the answer is yes, they can take fountain pens on planes. Sometimes I will be like, but there are some more things you need to know just to make sure your ink doesn't spill. But, you need to keep reading is what I'm saying, but you need to keep reading. That's like a little tease that helps people keep scrolling down the page to learn more and read the rest of your blog post. And that's my intros. First sentence, something snappy, a big statement, a one liner joke, a question. It doesn't really matter, but as long as you're helping people understand they're in the right place, the lead, the reverse conclusion up front, something that proves why they should care or why they should listen to you. And then another thing that says why they should care, why they should keep reading, tease why they need to keep reading, or at least show table of contents. Moving on. Um, this is going to be really disappointing and I have bad news for you, but I also have good news for you. The bad news is I'm not going to give you a template or a formula for the rest of your blog post. You're on your own. The good news is you did it yourself when you wrote an outline and you did all the research up front. You tried to determine what were the uh, topics and subtopics that I need to include where. You got some ideas on how to stand out. Remember this? Like, oh, I might do a graph here or an image or add some media or a table or an expert quote or something to stand out and be different and be better than your competitors. You already did all that stuff. Now all you have to do is fill out the outline. You just write the outline and you're done. That's it. That's that's it. That's content. I have some more tips for you down here on some nitty gritty how to make it better. But honestly, that's, that's all you got to do now. You write an intro, you fill in your outline that you already created and you're done. And filling in your outline should, if you did your homework, be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Writing is never like super easy and smooth. You're going to have to go back and edit. It's going to be messy. You're going to get writer's block every now and then. But if you already have those subtopics and headers lined out in your outline, it should be easier than ever. Right. Should you write a conclusion? I do these days because I like to try and win those Google featured snippets. And sometimes that happens with another like summary. Here's my bottom line. Here's my overall opinion. 
another conclusion, but honestly, and especially if you're paying writers, that's just wasted words, right? If you're paying per word, it's just wasted. You don't need conclusions, really. Uh, John Dykstra is actually the one that turned me on to not writing conclusions. You don't really need it. If you want to, go for it. If not, fine. Should you include FAQs? Yes, in my opinion, on all SEO blog posts, period. That's just, that's just helpful. Not only does it, um, you know, add more words and more relevant words, but it's just good for users. They might get to the end and have more questions. What questions do they have? And honestly, I, I usually start with the people also ask how to clean fountain pen with dried ink. How do you fix dry ink? How do you use vinegar to clean a fountain pen? What's the best way to clean a fountain pen? Will fountain pen ink dry out? Some of these I might've answered in my outline and my blog post already, but anything that's like somewhat related, but not directly related is perfect here. There's a lot of these actually. How do you rejuvenate a fountain pen? That'd actually be a good thing for that post. I should like put that one in there. But yeah, I, I highly recommend adding an FAQ section. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a cop out and I'm sorry, not sorry. I've already given, uh, given you this content. This video right here is absolutely fantastic. If I do say so myself, I'm very proud of this video. Outrank huge sites with these 13 tips. So when people talk about good content, make your content great, it has to be the best content on the internet for any given topic. You'll hear this a lot in online marketing. These are my tips to make that happen. They're very practical. This stuff right here, I've actually included them right here. You can read this on your own. I'm not going to rehash it in this video because I did it really succinctly. <laughs> is that a word? I think it's a word. Uh, in this video right here. So I've linked to it in this document. I will also try and link to it below this video on YouTube and in the paid course. You can just click right here. Um, I'm not going to go through them. Yeah. I was going to, I was like, I don't want to spend the time to go through this. I've already done it. And I'm, I'm going to just go watch this video. It's short and sweet. It's to the point. It goes through 13 things that will absolutely improve the quality of your content. And you will rank out, you will outrank bigger sites with this type of content. You will. And these are all practical. These aren't like high lofty things that are going to take months and months to learn. These are pretty simple, practical things you can do. So go watch this video to see more nitty gritty tips on taking the content you have and making it better. Editing, polishing, publishing, that sort of stuff. But other than that, we've already gone through everything. This is how I write blog posts. And if you're feeling a little let down, like, oh, I wish you had a magic formula for me, a magic secret for me. You're not alone. I understand. I feel the same way. Whenever I take SEO courses, I still take SEO courses this day, like once or twice a year. And I'm always let down like, oh, come on, give me a magic formula, man. Give me the secret. There is no secret. Do the research in your outline. Make sure your intros are solid. Add FAQs. And other than that, you're just filling out your outline. And that's it. The best you can. Don't worry about keyword stuffing. Don't worry about keywords all everywhere. Write in a natural way that sounds like a real human wrote the blog post, including your subheaders and you have a good piece of content and then use these for more polishing just to make sure that those bumps are going to be seen friendly in Google's eyes. There you go.